Thanks for joining us for the 2024 Adapted Softball Online Rules Module. My name is Jason Nickleby, Assistant Director with the League and the Director of the Officiating Program. I will be narrating the first and last portions of this module. We will now cover some general Adapted Softball information before reviewing the rules changes for 2024. We will cover the points of emphasis for this year and wrap up the module with a review of several rules and administrative items. As a reminder, if a coach, parent, or other concerned party has an eligibility question, such as chemical or behavior, should direct those questions to the activities director. Even if a softball player is ineligible, the umpires are not to rule on such matters, and all inquiries should be directed to the activities director of the school involved. Even if an AD asks for a player to be removed, the AD needs to do this. Umpires do not get involved in alleged bylaw infractions. Hello, I'm Rachel Palmer. I am the coordinator of officials for the State High School League. I will be narrating the next part of this module. Electronic information may be transferred to the dugout from anywhere outside of live ball area. However, electronic devices used for coaching purposes may only be utilized in the dugout. Beginning January 2027, Uniforms may only bear a single manufacturer's logo, school name, school logo, mascot, and or the participant's name. Advertisements, messages, team slogans, etc. will no longer be permitted. Consistent language has been established for the NFHS that describe what information is permitted on the uniform. A player's name, school name, school nickname, school mascot, and or the school logo may be placed on the uniform. There is no longer a color restriction for headbands and ribbons. However, plastic visors and bandanas are still illegal. This adds consistency amongst headwear requirements for other NFHS sports. A wristband with a playbook or play card may only be worn on player's wrist or arm or kept in the back pocket. It may not be worn on the belt. If a pitcher wears one, it must be on the non-pitching arm. This rule clarifies where equipment can be worn. This change will, will prohibit wristbands from being worn on the belt. It remains legal for players to keep the wristband with a play card in their back pocket. The umpire may end a game if playing conditions around the facility become unacceptable to safely continue the game. This rule provides justification when an umpire ends a contest due to unacceptable playing conditions to continue to play in addition to weather. And now we will cover the NFHS softball editorial changes. The NFHS has added the words when initially detected to clarify what occurs when a damaged bat is initially discovered in the game. The bat will be removed from the game. The NFHS has added the wording in contact with the pitcher's plate to clarify where the pitcher is required to take or simulate taking a signal from the catcher. If the player does not pause to take or simulate taking a signal in this position, it is an illegal pitch. Rule 712, Penalty 2. This changes the formatting and the penalty to clarify the effects of when an improper batter becomes a runner or is put out and the defensive team appeals to the umpire before the next pitch. Rule 712, Penalty 3. This formats the penalty to clarify the effect for when an improper batter has completed their turn at bat and no appeal has been made before the next pitch. Now we will cover the NFHS softball points of emphasis. The first point of emphasis is in game management. The team has 60 seconds between innings. The umpire and coach communication should be conversational, not confrontational. Professionalism should be followed by coaches and umpires to maintain a successful working relationship. Although umpires are not there to rush the players, one of their responsibilities is to 
help maintain a good flow of the game. Unacceptable conditions. Umpire jurisdiction is limited to the confines of the field of play. Issues outside of the field of play, such as spectator behavior, is monitored and controlled by event management. Absent a designated event manager, the home team's head coach assumes this responsibility. However, if conditions become unacceptable for play due to spectator conduct, umpires have authority to end the contest. In addition to spectator behavior, other external conditions could result with the umpire having to end the contest. For example, at the start of a game, a wildfire might be safe distance with winds carrying the smoke away from the field. If these conditions change and result in conditions becoming unacceptable for play, it may result in the umpire having to call the game. Unreported versus illegal substitutions. An illegal substitute is a player who is ineligible to occupy a position in the lineup. This can occur when a player enters or re-enters the game without eligibility to do so. That is an illegal re-entry. Re-enters the game in the wrong position in the batting order. Is the flex and enters the game as a batter or runner in a different position in the batting order than the DP or violates the courtesy runner rule. All of these violations result in an illegal substitution and the offender is restricted to the bench or dugout for the first offense. In contrast to an illegal substitute, an unreported substitute is a player that could legally occupy the position they are in the lineup, but has simply failed to report that they are entering the game. The first offense results in a team warning. And now for the 2023 Minnesota points of emphasis. We play by NFHS rules. Umpires should not apply rules from other codes for our games. There's a warning given to a coach if there's unreported substitution. The player is not out. Leaving early is a dead ball, out, and no pitch. An illegally batted ball is a dead ball out. The entire foot needs to be out of the box, on the ground, and the benefit of the doubt should go to the batter. Batter interference is also a dead ball out. Coaches, players, or other team personnel must be in the dugout or dead ball territory as defined in Rule, rule 2.22.4 during the opponent's infield practice prior to the start of each game. The only exception to this modification would be the pitcher and catcher who are warming up in foul territory while using proper protective equipment and one or two personal protectors who are wearing a glove and a helmet. No warm-up activity shall take place during the pregame conference. Umpires use preventative officiating to avoid any issues before they escalate. Umpires must always treat coaches with respect and treat them equally. Coaches are very sensitive when you spend more time with the coach of one team than the other. Be equal, consistent, and fair with all coaches, no matter their gender, age, experience, race, or previous relationships with that coach. Perceptions are critical. Do everything possible to show that you are unbiased. Umpires, when having issues with a coach, do not threaten or say what you're going to do if behavior doesn't change. Instead, use a comment that will diffuse the situation. This will allow for options of how you respond. When making a specific threat, such as not another word, you will need to follow through or you may lose control and or the respect of those, that coach. A 15 run rule is effective for all regular and postseason games. This rule covers games where a team is behind by 15 and has completed its turn at bat after three and a half or four innings of play. Please note that this is not after two and a half or three innings. A game is considered complete when five full innings have been completed or the home team is ahead after four and a half innings. Play has gone beyond five innings, but there is an exception for the state tournament. 
If a game is called when there have not been an equal number of terms at bat, the score will be the same as the end of the last completed inning, unless the home team ties or goes ahead in their half inning, and the score is recorded when the game is called. A game that ends before has become a regulation game, or a game that ends in a tie, is considered a suspended game. A suspended game is continued from the point of interruption with the same lineup and batting order as was in place at the time of the suspension. In Minnesota, there is never a situation where that you would start a game over once it has begun. Now here are a few of our adaptive softball points of emphasis. Our adaptive softball supplement has been updated to align with the NFHS softball rulebook. Please be sure that you go through the supplement and read the additions. Please also make sure that you are reading the complete National Federation High School rulebooks. All NFHS rules apply to our softball unless it is noted differently in our supplement. Coaches and umpires must be aware of the Minnesota modifications to the NFHS rulebooks. These can be found on your coach's dashboard as well as an arbiter under the Central Hub tab. These rules cover regulations and suspended games. Game ending procedures are also listed in this document including the 15 run rule. This is a clarification for our illegal pitch. Rule 6-4-4 under the penalty. An illegal pitch shall be called immediately by the umpire both verbally and with a delayed dead ball signal. The batter is awarded a ball even if they swing and miss or foul off the pitch. The exception to this rule would be 1. If the batter reaches first base safely and all other runners advance at least one base, the illegal pitch is nullified and all actions stand, or two, if the batter does not reach first base safely, or if any of the other runners fail to advance at least one base, the coach of the team at bat shall have the option of the result of the play or take the penalty of the illegal pitch. This is just a reminder about team uniforms as explained in the rules supplement. All team members should wear uniforms of the same color and style, a uniform should not have any dangerous or reflective buttons or ornaments. Each player shall be numbered on the back of his or her shirt with a plain number of solid color contrasting with the color of the shirt. Also, if any member of the team wears a hat, it has to be worn with the brim of the hat facing forwards at all times. The catcher is the only position that can wear a hat backwards. This is a reminder for our pre-game conference for both our CI and PI divisions. It is mandatory for the head coach to attend the pre-game conference as well as your team captains. The head coach needs to be there because you need to verify that all of your players are legally equipped at the start of each game. This is just a reminder about our placement of our wheelchairs and walkers in our PI division. Please remember that the walker and wheelchair placement needs to be in the same side of the batter's box as the side that they are hitting from. For example, if you have a wheelchair person hitting from the right side batter's box, their front two wheels have to be situated in the right side batter's box. If you have a person who has a walker and they are standing, at least two of their wheels of their walker need to be situated in the right side batter's box along with them. This is just a reminder for our base coaches. Base coaches, remember, you are not allowed to touch any runner while play is live. Any assistance to hold a runner up on a base or push them towards the next base is illegal, and that runner will be called out. A batted ball that goes into a bleacher area will be ruled as a ground rule double if the fielder cannot field the ball instantly. A ball that is bouncing or rolling along the top of the bleacher area is an example of a fielder that is not able to play that ball instantly. The MAAA is responsible for our success during each season. Coaches are encouraged to join the Minnesota State High School Coaches Association. Please go to the website at 
mshsca.org and join. Please note that each activities director should have full access to the conference website. The ADs will also be responsible for making any changes to your schedule on the MAAA website. Also, it is the coach's and or AD's responsibility for recording your game scores on the MAAA website. If you only post them onto the Minnesota State High School League website, it will not be transferred to the MAAA website. So please keep your results current. Again, please remember to put your scores in both the Minnesota State High School League as well as the MAAA website. Inaccurate or incomplete results could affect your team's seating position for the MAAA year-end tournament qualifying games. If you have any questions or need to change your schedule as of today, March 19th, please contact me to make your changes. My email address is mhipcheck7 at msn.com or you can reach me on my cell at 612-743-0511. If you make any changes and only post them onto the MAAA website, I will not have the correct dates and you will not have umpires. So please make sure you contact me to verify that you'll be getting umpires for a change game. Thanks and have a great season. Hi, this is Jason. I'm back to cover a few administrative items before concluding this module. The NFHS Learning Center is the home to more than 90 online professional development courses for everyone within the interscholastic community. Coaches, students, officials, parents, and administrators can find more than 60 courses that are available for free. Go to nfhslearn.com to register and to learn more. The NFHS has partnered with USA Softball to present the online coaching softball course. Go to nfhslearn.com to view the trailer, description, and outline for this course and encourage your coaches to sign up today. Coaches and umpires are asked to contact the state coordinator, Michelle Snyder, for any questions on rules, rule interpretations, umpiring mechanics, or other questions regarding umpiring. Her contact info is available on both the Arbiter Central Hub page and on the coaches dashboard.